We are not alone. You are watching Contact TV with your hosts, Leslie Mitchell-Clark and Wes Roberts. Exploring ufology, metaphysics, and beyond with the world's foremost experts. Hello, friends, and uh, welcome to the premiere episode of our season 13. This is Contact TV, and uh, I am joined, as always, by my co-host, uh, Mr. Wes Roberts. Wes Roberts there here. He is. Welcome. <laughs> and I'm Leslie Mitchell-Clark, as always, and uh, I am so excited. We have a very special guest to kick off this season, someone who has visited us before, but we feel that it's more important now than ever that you hear some of these fascinating facts and experiences that this guest has to offer. And I'm talking about Mike Patterson of Sasquatch, Ontario. Mike, welcome back to the program, and we are so pleased that you could be here. And I know that during this past year, during this past calendar year, you have had many fascinating experiences, uh, some of which I know that you post. And um, I would just like to hear about where things are right now and how things are for you. In other words, how are you feeling now about disclosure with regard to the beings that you've come to know and love really as family? Okay. First of all, thanks uh, for having me on, Leslie and Wes. Nice, nice, thank nice you. to be here Our again. Pleasure. Our pleasure. Uh, nice to see you guys again. You too. Um, uh, the, the last year, last 10 years have just been spectacular in, in developing, you know, this relationship with this family of Sasquatch. And I know a lot of people have a difficult time, you know, understanding that, comprehending that. But um, I've, I've been able to gather so much supporting evidence. They just continually give it to me, right? It's um, pretty much every visit I'm, I'm getting something new. And I, I actually just got back from a visit last night, as, as you guys know. Um, I found out Neff has a, has a woman in his life with, uh, with children. Uh, that's all I got. I don't know how many kids. I didn't get any names or anything. Um, actually, when I asked that, I, I said, I mean, I mean, don't, no disrespect with, with any of the questions. And um, when I did ask one question, I had a marble come out of hair or out of thin air, and hit my uh, my water container really hard. Right. So it's like, okay, I don't know. Is that? Uh, you said I take I that as I didn't a no. Piss you off. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, so at this point, there's there's so much activity that goes on indoors. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole inter interdimensional thing. There's no question whatsoever. So as far as uh, how I'm feeling, um, you know, I've taken a lot of a lot of flack and ups and downs over the years, and, and kind of like a roller coaster ride. You know, I get pissed off sometimes at, at some of the humans and um, just you know the, some of the comments, and I try to let it roll roll off as much as I can. Right? Um, I've done a little bit of ranting on some of my videos, but. <laughs> I've also done that for specific reason, right? Because mm -hmm. there, there has been a lot of uh, trouble through the years. So uh, my, I'm just thinking ahead. If, uh, if by chance I ever ended up in a court of law, I, I have a, a record of Indeed. all the harassment that's gone on over the years. That's why I do that. So, but at this point, um, uh, you know, I feel great and feel good. Uh, the contact continues. Mm -hmm. um, they, they periodically show up at home. I had an incident uh, not too long ago where uh, I was at home. I have this little container, uh, uh, compost container outside my door, mm -hmm. just a, a little thing, right? It's never been knocked over, never opened, never a mess ever in the whole time I've had it there. And so I go at the door and there's, a, there's an avocado skin sitting there right where I step out the door and the lid's down, there's no mess. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the hell's that doing there? So I pick it up, I throw it back in the compost container, and then I go back inside. And then um, I went to go out the door again, so I come out of my living room, and then I can see my door right there at the back door. And my, now my winter boots are sitting in the middle of the mat. <laughs> they were tucked, they were under the rack, because winter's over, you know, this was yeah. not long ago, it was in the summer. So, so as soon as I saw that, I knew I had a visitor. And then the avocado skin made sense. So that's always a good feeling um, when that happens. And then not, not too long prior to that, I had an incident um, 
where I was sitting on my, uh, on my couch at home. I got my, my cat stand right, right there behind me. And suddenly I heard a, a just cut through like a knife. I heard a, a cat, um, two cat meows come out of the kitchen. And I instantly swung my head up around my cat's in his perch sleeping. So um, they've done that before with uh, similar sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that's actually the only time I've had vocals in this place, but I've heard vocals in, indoors before um, at another place I lived. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've, I've uh, collected numerous pieces of uh, vocals documented on location when I'm up visiting Neff's family with Dwayne and that. So there's, there's often um, vocals heard in, indoors, which is why I now record indoors as well as out. This is mimicking a cat? Is, is yeah, yeah. They're mimicking a cat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They, they, they've also done a, a wolf right outside the cottage walls in a, on a Saturday afternoon. When we got there once and, and we're sitting in the living room and suddenly just, it was so loud it sounded like it was indoors and we sat there with our mouths open like, what the hell? And then it showed us that, oh, it's you guys making those sounds because I recorded them. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, around the cottage. Well, awesome. they obviously they have a fit, quite a developed larynx and voice box. It's not simian, which is why, again, mm -hmm. I think this disproves the you know giganticus approach to who they are and what they are. That they yeah. they they have a developed voice box. They can vocalize and say words. I've heard you know many vocalizations that you have posted and brought with you. Um, what do you think, Mike, is the reason that people are so afraid to look at the interdimensional nature of these beings? Is it, is it fear-based? Why, why are they so resistant? Why, what is the resistance? I, I really don't understand it. Well, MK Ultra, you know, the, the world is brainwashed and, and we're all conditioned to fear. We're kept you know, our vibrational existence is kept low on purpose. Uh, you know, there's a war on human consciousness. It's, it's clearly evident. Mm -hmm. So, uh, y you know, this is all whatever CIA operative stuff that mm -hmm. are, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we all know, is uh, not by chance. It's being done purposely. Um, so there's a lot of fear with these also you know people see them and understandably their size uh, the visual it, it would scare the hell out of um, you know pretty much everybody i think um i a after all these years i'm still waiting for a close visual yeah. but i've been you know patting the head many times lots of physical contact it used to happen outdoors all the time and then one day i said hey you know can you guys do this inside too and and they started doing it so um, but as far as the, the fear, it's, you know, we're, we're conditioned to fear as humans and, mm -hmm. and they're, they can be scary looking. And from my understanding, they, they tell people, you know, who want to see them sometimes they'll, they'll get a telepathic message, you know, you're not ready. We'll scare you. Uh, that sort of thing. That, that's not the case with me. Cause I've asked that. Mm -hmm. Why hasn't Neff shown himself close to me? And, mm -hmm. Um, I, and I said, is it because he, you know, would scare me, uh, I would fear? And they said, no, that's not the reason. 
Um, I, I've been told by them I'm watched by bad humans, mm -hmm. so I think that has something to do mm -hmm. with it. So they're being, they're being cautious and they're being yeah. protective, yeah. I, I, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm sure I'm monitored pretty closely at this point. You know, th there's nobody else that is really showing this level of contact with this much supporting evidence that I, I put out. So, of course, no I'm watched, right? It's, no it's one. a no-brainer. There are a handful of mediocre television shows which are treating it like, you know, big game hunting. And it's, it, it's horrible. Um, uh, Mike, do you think that, uh, that Sasquatch chooses to show themselves at certain times? Oh yeah, they yeah. can choose to to really appear in a dense physicality or or not. So they sort of maybe they have some type of step up transformer. I don't know, it's biological where they're able to accelerate their vibration at will. I believe that's what it is, oh, okay. because I, I know that the the infants, the little ones, can already disappear and materialize. So. They already know. So I think it's an inherent quality. So, uh, yeah, there's something about vibration, I believe, you know, they're able to raise and lower to whatever physicality or, you know, whatever density, um, full flesh and blood, mm -hmm. as you guys saw with those photos I posted of, yes. of um, Neff's headshots. And, and I don't have all the answers, you know, on those shots because people are saying, well, where's the body? You know, it's dark. I don't know if he's leaning. I don't even know if he's showing his, his whole body. I, you know, can he materialize uh, just a part of him? I believe he can. Because uh, there's another shot that was taken years back um, by Dwayne. We were going up the steps to the, the cottage front door. And I told him, you know, take some photos just, you know, behind you, don't look. And he actually captured an arm reaching over a snowmobile. And I found a, a marble in between the two snowmobiles later, but uh, just a hairy, forearm reaching over and you would think you would see part of the, the the body you know crouch down just a little bit that you couldn't see anything so and and also I got um, one time uh, physical contact on my face uh, put there uh, covered my mouth and nose I was sitting in the chair and 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 I I saw this dark smoky substance like right here in front of my eyes um, just before that happened and then it, w it was a firm you know cup over my my face I I was calm you know I was fine with it um, I believe that they can show themselves in part or in whole mm. 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 Wes did you have some oh, questions so for Mike? Questions. Okay <laughs> carry on <laughs> um, How do they see us, we, we tend to speak selfishly as human beings. It's like, everything's about me. It's about how I see things. It's about me being afraid. How do they see us? Or have they ever spoken about that? Um, like with myself, they've been very adamant of how they, they love me, you know, how mm -hmm. they feel about me. Um, they've stated it mm -hmm. verbally uh, mm -hmm. several times, and then lots of drawings and stuff. Um, and, and the visuals, Mike, like, are we pretty weird looking to them, do you think? I may be asking you to speculate, but I'm curious about how they, yeah, how they sense us, how they feel us, how they actually perceive us as like, that guy's short, that guy's tall or wide, or any of this stuff that we, we do, right? Yeah, I, I, do, I don't really, you know, know from their perspective, sure. but uh, um, I'm, I'm sure that uh, they look at some of us as funny looking as, as you know, I would guess. <laughs> yeah. They're probably, they're, they probably have seen many types of humans, you know, throughout the history because mm -hmm. they're ancient, ancient peoples who yeah. are long lived. Apparently, we were just talking about that before we went on camera where um, we're approximating now that they may live in excess of 200 years because that's the information that you're getting. So they're yeah, very long lived. Yeah. They, do, they don't appear to become ill. Do they, does that happen to them? Can they be victimized by, by illnesses? Um, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've never really asked that question. They know our illnesses. Mm -hmm. So if we have something internal going on, they know. Oh. And, you know, I remember once, it's funny, people say gift them garlic. They actually gifted me garlic once, oh, wow. which was interesting. And I asked them, is this to, you know, to help heal me? And they, they said, they wrote yes. Well, they, they, 
probably have an extensive knowledge of herbology at the right. very least. Because I know we've talked about this before, and I, I, I was asking you questions at the, the last time you visited, uh, visited us about their origin. So they have replied that they have always been here. In other words, they are probably the highest form of life that exists on this sphere that is still at least partly physical. So they, they were, were they seeded by, here by ETs or they, they, her, they share some of the human genome, they must. Well, it's been understood that the, the mitochondrial side of DNA is, is theirs is homo sapien. Mm -hmm. the, the nuclear DNA is unknown, mm -hmm. not of this world, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I asked them once who created humans, they didn't answer. And then I asked them, did the Anunnaki create humans? And they confirmed that. And then I, I asked them, um, do we have the same creator? And they said no. So that's all I've gotten from that. I don't mm. know anymore, you know, who their creator is. Uh, uh, yeah, it's... I wonder if they, if they pass into an afterlife and actually can inhabit <clears throat> the same so-called afterlife that we do, because I know from regressions in, in the interlife, um, all kinds of ETs are seen in the, what we call, you know, heaven. I mean, there's no negativity, no hate, you know, but are we in the same soul group? Do they share that dimension of heaven with us? I don't know, but that's, a, that's an interesting question. I, I would assume that they do, but mm -hmm. I, like, I don't really know for sure, right? But, um, you know, their ability to phase in and out of this dimension, uh, they seem to have a good grasp of um, energy manipulation. Yeah. Um, you know, they've been seen uh, cloaked, you know, see-through. They, they, they're completely invisible. Um, you know, their, their full physical, physicality, uh, everything in between, right? Um, they have... a, a a much greater grasp of truth and, and what, how things truly work, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but uh, to get answers out of them, it's, it's not uh, always it's easy. Not always yeah, easy. I ask a lot of questions, but I get few answers. Just like my husband. <laughs> he asks a lot of questions and maybe he gets a few answers, but not what he, he wants. Heard that. <laughs> so I, I wonder for our viewers, and I have someone special in mind, a close friend in Italy, and she wanted me to ask this question. If, if for her and for our viewers, you could talk about the physical attributes, uh, and that would dispel some of the mystery and myths about it as you know it. Uh, I think that would be great if you could describe their physical attributes. Um, well, s science is still pushing this Gigantopithecus theory. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they assume this ape once existed by a handful of teeth and a partial mandible. That's all they've ever found with that. Um, and apes have a divergent toe, you know, they mm -hmm. stick out to the side mm -hmm. sort of thing. And um, Sasquatch have human looking feet. So they are definitely not apes. They are, well, per se as an, an animal, they, they are a human type. Mm -hmm. I've asked them, are you human? They, they gave me a Y slash N, so yes and no. Yeah. So maybe that's that nuclear side. There was there was a, a you know study done by Melba Ketchum where basically something about a, a ancient giant lemur, something to do with that. I don't know if that has to do with the nuclear DNA. I'm not sure, but um, as far as their yeah five digits on yes. their hands and feet, right. mm -hmm. um, from what I've seen from all the family members that I've seen, we've documented. Uh, um, I don't even know how many family members are, are in this family. I think we've gotten 10 names. Um, there's been a lot of footprints seen from different individuals. They all got five toes. Mm -hmm. um, handprints have been seen. They're, they're all, you know, five digits, all the same. Wow. Well, maybe would, would you be all right if we took a look at some of your casts that you have brought? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll start, uh, let's start with... Uh, uh, you can identify this. I think this is Neff. I'm not sure. And introducing our special guest. Oh, yes, yeah, special guest. Very My long suffering husband. Here he is. <laughs> there he is. 
This is actually the young guy, Nin Yannon. So ah. this was from November 19th, uh, 2022. And he has a bigger foot. I think I, I was trying to get his age last night, but I didn't. I might get it at some point, but um, he, uh, I think he's about 15, maybe 16 years old at the most, because he, uh, as I mentioned to you guys earlier, he was witness sitting on the couch at one point. Yes. And, it, and this was years back and his feet didn't touch the floor. <laughs> his name was given telepathically. And then mm -hmm. um, I had it confirmed in writing. So that's Nin Yannin, uh, who's, this guy's a troublemaker, man, I tell you. He, he is responsible for putting smells right up my nose. <laughs> like, like nasty smells. I, once I felt like a little tornado, mini tornado whirlwind of, of uh, crap. I'll say, <laughs> smell right up my nostril. Dwayne's sitting, he's sitting yeah. closer um, to me than, than you are, Wes. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't smell anything. And then uh, it was reversed. And then Dwayne was given that. And, wow. But he's given nice smells too, right? Mm -hmm. And I've, so I've learned that they can actually recreate smells. Um, uh, I'll just say, because it's legal now. So Dwayne had, had purchased some, uh, some black hash from a mm -hmm. dispensary. And it's in this little glass container, and it's sealed, right? You, you can't smell anything out of there. I took the lid off one point. I smelled it, and, you know, and he put it away. And um, we'll, t we'll have dinner. He'll go crash in his room. I'll crash in the couch for a while, you know, because we're up all night, right? And I wake up, and, and the room just reeks of black hat. <laughs> the whole room. I'm like, what Whoa. the hell? And, I, I, you know, I was... But there's been um, other nice wood smells. Last night there was some perfumey kind of stuff going on. Going on, you know, no nasty smells. I had an incident where um, I was at my tent spot, and I was by myself, and a, a deer came along. And I actually that last video I posted. I, I posted the. I believe it's a confrontation between Nin Yan and, and a deer. Mm -hmm. So the deer came along and started stomping its feet. And it was about 30 paces from my tent. I couldn't see anything. I, I could only hear it, right? And the deer snorting and stomping its feet right by my recorder. And I know I had, uh, the, uh, you know, Sasquatch presence just immediately before that because of my audio, listening back to my audio. So I'm quite uh, confident it was a confrontation between them. So partway through that, you know, these stomps and snorts, um, I got concerned that this deer might come running through my camp and go right through my tent and trample me so I, mm -hmm. I had an air horn I give a little blast just a little blast well I probably scared the crap out of him with that because <laughs> that was unexpected and it's loud right and shortly after that I got a little crap smell right beside my tent <laughs> yeah, just a little tinge just let me know Mike you scared me man don't do that again <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's very teenager-like somehow, oh, he, isn't a, it, though? Yeah, he's a total teenager. Oh, my teenager. goodness. And, of course, he's, he, he seems to enjoy, you know, uh, partying in the, as well. So he's, uh, he's uh, been known to engage in various substances. I, I've now become a mushroom dealer for his family of Sasquatch. Magic mushroom dealer. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds. <laughs> I, um, I... It's, I think it's been about five or six times now. They, they're gone like that every day. You put them out, they're gone. They, they love them. And I gift indoors now, too. Right? Like I, I don't even, you know, I used to do that stuff when I was younger, but uh, yeah. at this point, I, I don't like it. It's too much. Yeah. So uh, Dwayne's the same. He doesn't do them either, right? So, um, uh, but this guy, he loves them. So last night, uh, I, I took four grams, which is a pretty good dose. So uh, he might be about seven feet tall at this point. So um, I'm yet to go through the audio. I, I remember the first time he, he took it, it, it actually, it wasn't a gift. It, I used to keep it in my bag because I found out that if I take a tiny, tiny little piece when I'm having an allergy attack, it kills my allergy attack. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would carry it because I had allergies. Uh, I haven't had them for a while, but so I remember I had it like a two and a half gram piece in a, in a pill container and it disappeared out of my bag and I was like, what the hell? You know, Dwayne didn't take it and I found out it was this guy. It was that guy. No, no sinus issues. No, no <laughs> sinus issues, I'm sure, among the Sasquatch in general. And, and that, that night I recorded him yelling his head off, run, you know, running through the woods. <laughs>
It, it, I, actually, it was, uh, it was first thing in the morning. He woke me up with his, with his screams. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so you have a, a bunch more casts, right? Yeah. Okay, let's look at the next one. Yeah. And just uh, do them right in order there, Terry. And okay. So th this one here. Um, Size 12. Yeah, this was... Uh, this was back in 2013. This is April 2013. Oh. So this is Neff when he's 17 years oh, old. Wow. This is Ninyanin at basically 15 or 16. So oh my. He's, he's a big boy. Um, Neff, uh, I've documented six inches of growth on his foot over 10 years. Mm -hmm. it, it's now at 18 inches as of uh, beginning of April oh, this year. Goodness. 18 by 6 inches. This is 12 by 5. And we can see, you know, the lines, the structure yeah. of the bottom of the foot, in particularly in this from <clears throat> Neff. Yeah, clearly. I mean, you, you can't, like, recreate that. These are all cast in snow. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to mention something, too, about... Uh, so there is a very well-known anthropologist in the subject, I won't say his name, that uh, he's, you know, had some disparaging remarks about some of my evidence that I presented, and... And he stated that uh, this person was wearing a shoe. So oh, really? Calling me a hoaxer. <laughs> well, when, you when you look at Ninyanin, look at his little toe. Yeah. He's got the same trait. Yeah. So that's two. A really members. small, kind of crooked little toe. Yeah. 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 Hereditary, uh, you know, distinct, right. distinction trait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that kind of blows that uh, anthropologist. Accusations are indeed it does out of the proverbial soup. And, and the seven foot. foot's not the top; that's just eight, intermediary. Eight yeah. They can get much lower. Like they eight, eight nine feet, or do you even know? Oh no, no more than that. The more than eight or nine. The big guy in the family was ba he w he was um, photographed back in 2013. You know, it was through the cottage window, so mm -hmm. latched, latched onto the screen and that, but. Um, I went and recreated the photo the next week, stood in the same spot, and the, the picture was taken from uh, inside the cottage through the window, so I put um, the big guy at about 12 feet. And Oh my gosh. He had a 20-inch footprint at that time. Um, it, we documented it at 21, so it might even be bigger now, but so the okay. biggest print's 21 Mammoth. inches, but 12 feet tall. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and Neff might be you know, upwards of nine feet, maybe even more at this point. Mm -hmm. um, his foot is now 18 inches, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, okay. okay, they grow very large. All right. So, Terry is on his way with the next largest one. That, one's Heaviest a, one. That one's heavy, huh? <laughs> Air, Air Jordans would fit them. So this was, uh, I believe this was 2018, um, the, the next size I got from Neff's foot so it stops right there oh okay. so that's neff's foot from 2018. yeah uh, the yeah. the snow wasn't you know uh, it's all these are all done in snow right so mm -hmm. it comes down to temperature mm -hmm. you know and, and how it dries and that like uh, this was april 13th 2013 mm -hmm. it's a mild day so mm -hmm. that's why i get that's the, why you get I such got accuracy some that dermal that. ridge lines and yeah that. so yeah this is um oh there's a funny story about this i just i just realized you see on the back here. <laughs> little, little so, so what happened was, D Dwayne and I were out there, and he sees these tracks in the snow, and he goes, what are those? I said, oh, that's the red squirrel. And then um, I go back out to, to take this. <laughs> there was no trackway leading to it. It's almost like he grabbed a red squirrel, squirrel and stuck, stuck its paws, paws yeah. you know? It's just, it's just, I was like, look at that. Yeah, so I got a little red squirrel's uh, <laughs> paws there. It's cute. And, this one is, uh, I think this is 2020 or 20, might be 2021. Um, so this is all, this is Neff 2. I didn't get the, I didn't get the, um, the width properly mm -hmm. just because of the way the snow was. Right, right, right. But I got the length. You and did. that's a 16 inch print. So well, that's you got the metatarsal a, a, accurately. You, yeah. you know, I question that whole thing that that whole uh, mid-tarsal break thing that um, Meldrum goes on about. Mm -hmm. I, question, I question a lot that mm -hmm. comes out of his mouth because uh, because of my experience. Mm -hmm. You know, he's still pushing a gigantopithecus theory, right? It's, oh, like, yeah. it's well, like, no, look, no. They're, they're human. No. Human types. Like, yeah. You know, like, look at their feet. So you can see the, the small toe like that again, mm -hmm. um, you know, still showing that trait. 
So I, that is the biggest I have of Neff's foot at this point. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, it's two inches bigger than that now. It's uh, as of this year, but the snow wasn't, wasn't um, really the substrate there. It wasn't uh, good enough to, to, yeah. to cast. It was actually the very last mm -hmm. visit with patches of snow on the ground this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. early, you know, back in April. Um, so I was happy to get uh, that. He actually gave his print within 15 minutes of arrival. And then later on, he gave a partial face shot selfie on my, uh, on my camera. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked permission if I was allowed to put that out. And they said yes, surprisingly, because uh, the, the headshots that Dwayne had taken, the two headshots mm -hmm. that were taken seconds apart that show different facial expressions, um, I sat on those for almost three and a half years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I asked at the beginning, do you want these put in a video for the world to see? They wrote, not yet. Mm -hmm. So that was a, you know, interesting response and I let it go right then and, um, three and a, almost three and a half years and then suddenly, you know, I don't want to get into the details of how I got the message, but I was mm -hmm. told, Mike, you show and, and, mm -hmm. and they gave a picture, you know, so I knew what I was putting out. So there's a wow. change in their perception of the world to want to do that. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they've shown things through, you know, through experiences that they can see ahead in our timeline. I don't know how far, mm -hmm. so they know stuff wow. that's coming and wow. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so the, the, we are in the midst of a reveal. This is not a discovery at all. This is a cover-up, really. Yeah. yeah, it's they are revealing as they choose, and I can see, you know, I can see how they're doing it just because of my own experience, right? Mm -hmm. It's sort of in tandem with um, uh, the what's the big revealing? They have two conferences on it so far scientists and everyone else. Disclosure. Oh, yeah, the, the disclosure, disclosure project. So yeah, the dis yeah. this seems to be in tandem with yeah. uh, disclosure in some respects. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I it's, all, it's, it's all connected. It. It's all tied oh, to it. Yeah. Okay. It's, part of it. it's all interdimensional, right? Because by acknowledging them and understanding them, we are going to be forced to acknowledge interdimensionality and beings of different spiritual evolution sharing our planet. I mean, I feel that there are elementals I think there are a number of beings yeah. that are not strictly physical sure. and can yeah. phase in and out mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. wish. Same here. You I know, I really too. believe that we're, uh, we're, we're full of life. My, my garden is a, is a prime example. You know, every, when I plant, I go out there and I speak to the elementals and I ask them to protect the plants from mm -hmm. opportunistic, you know, creatures. And uh, I'll tell you, this year, well, it, it just pays off because I had a bumper crop and I don't think it had anything to do with my skills. I think it was protection from the elementals. Nice. Just by asking for it. You know, it's all you have to do. So the communication itself is a whole lot easier than we are making it out to be. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously because Neff can, and Neff and his family can both send mm -hmm. and receive psychic messages from you. You can think about them and they'll show up. You know, so it is going, it is going both ways. You're using nonverbal communication both ways, yeah. which means that humans can do it. Um, this is part of who we are that we have let become, mm -hmm. what would be the word? We're, we're, well, it's, we don't accept it as part of us now. I've had my own experiences life that have proven that, you know, personally. Yeah. Yeah. It's a piece of self-evolution. Absolutely. And that's what we do if we're open to it. Mm -hmm. And if we're not, that's not what we do. I oh, know. there's one more spot, right? Oh, there's right? one more. There's one more coming in. <clears throat> okay, wow, that's yeah. a big one. Yeah, this was a single footprint placed in the snow. Thanks, Terry. Um, this was back, I, I believe, in 2017. So mm. this... Uh, 27. This is a, another family member. I believe it's a big older brother. Mm -hmm. um, I have recorded different voices. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, some of them sound similar, but um, there's distinct differences. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I've, I've heard Neff with a lisp, you know, pronouncing his S's. Um, oh, and then I have one saying Sasquatch says, yeah, I need no lisp there. So it's like, that's not Neff, you know, kind of sounds like him, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Um, it actually, say, and he actually says the word Sasquatch, right? Wow. Yes. Yeah. It's wow. just it's hilarious. Um, so yeah, this was uh, placed directly when we come out of the cottage, uh, the path, 
boom, right in a clean patch of snow, right where we see it. They, they put things right where you're going to see it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was a 17-inch uh, footprint. Gosh, huge. Um, so yeah, they're, they're a very large family. Um, and they live in familial groups. Do you think all the beings that are related, you know, the Yeti, the Swamp Ape, I mean, they're everywhere. Um, do they seem to tend to live in family units? They don't have, this is a ridiculous question, they don't have any central organization, or do they? I don't know. Like, as far as family, uh, they are very family-oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see that. Mm -hmm. um, and other people that I've dealt with, it, it seems the same. I think their numbers are actually extremely high. Mm -hmm. I, they're not, I don't think they're rare at all. Yeah. You know, I think uh, at one point, they might have been low because you know, I think there's an uh, agenda, there's, a, there's an agenda now to wipe them out, right? And I think they've had to deal with that in the past and, and they see what we're having to go through right now. Mm -hmm. So I think they're, they're reaching out to us to uh, um, kind of try and wake us up, right? But yeah, uh, yeah they're, they're definitely family oriented and um, yeah. Well, there's been plenty of, um, <laughs> reliable sightings where people have seen Sasquatch either being beamed out of a craft or beamed up to a craft. So I maintain that they're, they are acknowledged by evolved beings and they engage with them. And I believe I had, a, I had one uh, in all these people that I regress who have had ET experiences, there is one young lady who actually reported when she was aboard craft, seeing a Sasquatch, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. engaging with the other beings, just and maybe having some scientific contribution too. I mean, we're, we're, I, I feel that because of their huge physicality, we may be ignoring their huge brains. <laughs> you know? mm. Yeah, they're, they are very intelligent. You know, they, they make humans look slow in every way. Yeah. Every way. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, We've heard them move around us so fast. Um, I remember one time Dwayne and I are sitting outside, there's a bay there, and we hear these vocals on the far side. And suddenly they boom, 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 they're behind us. And, and traveling that fast, you know, it, it's impossible basically, right? So, um, yeah, the way they can move, uh, there was one time uh, uh, Dwayne and I had some texts going on, and. And we were getting some interference, so we knew we were being watched, listened to. So I said to him, I said, hey, tell Neff to come, come uh, visit me. I, I have woods behind my place. And I, I stepped outside the door. I think I walked about 30 paces, and it was the middle of the night, and just two massive wood knocks. You know, just the timing was impeccable, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, was that Neff? And, I think it was. It was just, you know, too coincidental. Yeah. Um, so the way that they can move, you know, and show up and... Uh, I'm thinking, and what would we do on the third instance of Mike being here? Because I have so many questions. Um, but uh, the one I think is more prominent in my mind is, um, we know you've had detractors mm -hmm. and skeptics, that's mildly called them that. Yeah, it never stops, right? Um, <laughs> our viewers, what... What can they do to help? What would you have us or them do to help you? Um, geez, uh, you know, just what we're doing here is great help, you mm -hmm. know, just uh, putting this stuff out there and, and people understanding that this stuff is real, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I've been doing this for 15 years, 10 years interacting with Neff's family. You know, I'm still called a hoaxer and that and mm -hmm. um, anybody that would be hoaxing you would, would have been ousted by now you yeah. know you would you would have been caught in some contradiction or exactly. inconsistency and uh, it's flawless you know my story uh, I don't prepare for anything I don't prepare for interviews I, I don't have to mm -hmm. you know I, I remember I, I forget probably a ton too mm -hmm. you know there's so much that has happened but um, so, you know, as far as the help, just the, the support I get now is, is great help. You know, it keeps me going, keeps me putting it out there publicly because 
or you know back in the day it was it was lean the other way it was more negativity and you know accusations right. and fake and this mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm. I, you know i still get that that'll never stop i don't think but um at this point the the support far outweighs far far outweighs when i put a video out now um you know i might get a half a dozen negative comments and and hundreds of supporting ones. And oh yeah. So yeah. We always share your videos on the Contact uh, TV um, uh, Facebook yes. page. We and we'll, and we'll be asking you for your website info in about 10 minutes or something like that. So uh, to make sure it gets out there. I know I caught you by surprise with that question. Apologies, but no, no, uh, it's all good. Okay. Yeah, we just want to know how we can help. We believe in you. That's right. I we need to that. help uh, support you and the work you're doing, and also support Neff and his family for taking the chance of exposure, because you know this is a real risk for yeah. them. Yeah. And uh, do you ever perceive of a time when you'll be able to bring maybe a select group of people that you handpick into mm. an environment? for the contact to open up a little bit wider, maybe? Um, like, I have brought in friends and family. Well, one family member. Mm -hmm. um, my nephew, I brought once, and it's funny, we were setting up the tents. Small tree got pushed over close by. Um, when it was dusk, there's a road, gravel road right there. And we're surrounded by woods, and um, as it was getting dusk, suddenly he saw a dark figure. Well, we heard footsteps just suddenly out of thin air. Mm -hmm. Footsteps are walking. He saw a dark figure. As soon as he saw it, it disappeared. Um, had a shimmering in front of us. Oh had uh, walked past the tents. He didn't hear that. He was still sleeping. Woke me up, though. Um, I've taken a few, you know, close friends in there. Mm -hmm. We've had things happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, walk past the tents. Uh, I remember we were sitting under a tarp once. Uh, it was raining, and then suddenly a branch right in front of the tarp gets pulled down and let go. You know, it was impossible for that to happen unless a hand was grabbing it, right? Mm -hmm. So things like that. Um, so I, I have taken people in there. I'm very selective. Sure. Yeah. yeah that, the one spot where I like to pitch my tent, I'm very wary about who I take in there. But um, mm -hmm. I actually have a friend uh, coming down from Washington next week. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, take him take him out for a couple nights, you know, so he's all excited, his, his, his flight is booked, and, you know, he, he's been asking me for a while, and I, I kept telling him, well, hey, September is probably the best time of year, you know, the bugs are, last night we were out, I did not see one mosquito, which was fantastic, because, you know, at a certain time, it's, they can carry you off, yeah, you know, <laughs> drain your blood supply, they're, they're, they're insane. All right, so Mike, um, what's the best way to get a hold of you? And I'm, I'm sure you would probably, if someone else has had a sighting or encounter, I'm sure you would like to oh, yeah. probably engage with them about that. And uh, what's the best way to, to reach you these days? I, I do have a, you know, a lot of people contact me and um, telling me their, their stuff. And, uh, and I help a lot of people with, because they don't understand, you know, what's going on with some of this stuff because it is interdimensional, right? Um, well, I have my YouTube channel, Sasquatch Ontario, mm -hmm. um, and I have SasquatchOntario.com, mm -hmm. my website, which I don't keep updated, you know, very often. That's kind of lagging on that. Um, I can be reached at SasquatchOntario at Yahoo.ca for Canada. Beautiful. Perfect. Through email. Perfect. And there's a contact page on my website as well. Oh, great. Well, we'll be posting those things, you know, at the back end of our of our program, but um, is there anything else that you'd like to I, ask Mike? I, I don't think we can get into this today, but um, I know with me, uh, under hypnosis especially with Leslie, um, a being sometimes gets very close, like inside me, and so I feel different. And uh, it's, we call it an overlay, Leslie yeah. is called an overlay, and she can, she perceives it. I just feel a little nauseous and, and sleepy and like I'm moving. Uh, but, but I wanted to talk to you one day about that. How does it feel for you? How does it feel for them? Uh, but we don't have to go into that today. Anyway. If you get that, if you get so close that it's almost like they're... That you feel something. That effect. you're feeling their emotions and... I have had an experience where um, this was back in 2013. I was asleep on the couch and they, they came to me and, and one of them, it, it was an older female. Um, I don't know what age at all, just that 
uh, she brought a child to meet me, and, and I could sense the older female in my peripheral. And it's funny, in the dream, I was asleep on the couch. I was laying on the couch, just like I was in real life. Yeah, yeah. And this was a contact dream. And so I sensed her in my peripheral, and she brought this, this young child. And I reached my hand out, and she held my hand, and I, and I felt all her emotions as, as if they were my own. I felt it go up through my body. And I remember at one point, I, I give my hand a little jerk just to get a reaction from her, not to scare her, just a, enough to get a response, and it was like an explosion of energy. She was so freaked out, but so excited at the same time. I felt her emotions like they were my own. Oh, wow. And it, okay. it, when I did that with the hand, it just exploded, went running through my body, and then I woke up, and like after it was, was done. She didn't let go when that happened. It, it, um, shortly afterwards, and then it was over, and I woke right up, and my head, I was just like mind blown. That so. is lovely. Incredible. Wow. And what a wonderful way to finish our talk, to yeah, talk about no what, we, what we share with these beautiful mm -hmm, beings. Mm -hmm, we share mm -hmm. spirit, we share emotion, we share love. Um, it's a whole world that's waiting to open up to us if we can just get ourselves to that point. Well, thank you, Mike, for everything you do. Thank you for bringing these, in, this, in, these incredible artifacts. And uh, we will look forward to welcoming you back as soon as you want to come back. My, my, <laughs> my pleasure, Leslie and Wes. Thank you very much for having me. You. You know, it was, uh, I was, uh, like I said, I was up all night. So to come here, I, I'm not even really tired. I feel good. So, oh, you know, great. Like, yeah, all right. Happy to be here and, and do this with you guys. And Wonderful. We'll wind up the show as we usual, will. right? And uh, remember out there, folks, uh, we, we are, are not, not alone. alone no. At all. No. no. <laughs> Thanks, Mike Thank Patterson. You, Mike. Thank you, we'll everyone. We'll see you soon. We are not alone. You are watching Contact TV with your hosts, Leslie Mitchell-Clark and Wes Roberts. Exploring ufology, metaphysics, and beyond with the world's foremost experts.